are so blessed, and we appreciate so much all of it. The title of the sermon today is going to be One Fight After Another, or One Fight to Another. God just, we, we as people continue to go from one situation to another situation, and it seems like there's always something coming up. But God said he'd never leave us nor forsake us, and he said he loved us, and he welcomed us into the family. One fight to another. Let's start with prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever and ever. Amen. Scholar, if you will, would you go ahead and give us our scripture back there, please, sir? Chapter 9. And he was three days without sight, and neither did eat nor drink. And there was a certain disciple at Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise and go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for one called Saul of Tarsus. For behold, he prayeth and hath seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hand on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he hath done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house, and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus that appeared unto thee in the way as thou camest, hath sent me that thou mightest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately, there fell from his eyes as it had been scales, and he received sight forthwith, and arose, and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this he that destroyed them which called on this name in Jerusalem? and came hither for that intent, that he might bring them bound unto the chief priests? Word of God for the people of God. Now we all know that Saul became Paul. We all know, or should know, if you studied your Bible, Kenny, that he was one that was killing all of the Christian people. Of course, they weren't called Christian back then. But he was the one that was doing that, and then all of a sudden, he met Jesus on the road to Damascus. A bright light that knocked him off his horse, and he became the one that wrote probably three-fourths, if not more, of the New Testament. But let me go back to Acts 9, 15. It says, but the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto you, or unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles. So we are the Gentiles. And Paul was made, or, or given the authority to be our apostle. But God said, for I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And when Ananias prayed for him, he received 
not only his sight, but he was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says here in verse 20, and straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he was the Son of God. Hallelujah. He had a moment with God. A moment with God that disrupted everything that he knew about himself. He was of the, of the tribe of Benjamin. And he knew that about himself. He was a Pharisee. He was one of the most conservative groups that there was about the law and observing the law. But he was zealous. He was committed to what he believed. He had lived all of his life up under the law. And in one moment, it was all disrupted. I don't care how long you've been in religion, if you ever have an encounter with Jesus Christ, it will absolutely revolutionize your life. One moment with Jesus can radically revolutionize you. And we all need Jesus. Somebody listening to me, you're trying to hold on to your traditions. You just want a little bit of Jesus. You think religion is a smorgasbord and that you can have a cup of this and a little of that and a little of the other and mix it all together. Me and God got our own thing going. If you encounter Jesus, You've got to give up everything because when Jesus gets in your life, everything in your life will change. That's why Paul said on his encounter, he said, I count it all as dumb. Everything I knew, I learned, I lived. I had a radical moment with God that changed my value system. My values have been misaligned in my life, and suddenly in one moment they were all brought back into alignment. The first shall be last, and the last shall be first. And all of a sudden, Paul, who was leading men, ended up being led by the men that he, were, he was leading. Because God said, I'm going to shut you down until you get this right. I'm going to shut you, uh, your finances down. I'm going to shut down your strength until you realize who I am. I am almighty God. And sometimes we have to break the horse down to get to the point to where we can train them the way that we want them to be. Especially when you're stubborn. Especially when you're hard-headed. And when you like to fight everything. God knows how to shut you down. God knows how to get a hold of you. God knows how to change your life. God knows how to put circumstances and situations in your path to get you going in the right direction. I'm going to bring you to a place of vulnerability where you're going to need people that you used to lead. And they're going to have to lead you as I bring you into the truth. There's a change taking place in your life. It was a moment that changed every other moment in the rest of his life. Next 2,000 years, God didn't trust anyone to evangelize Paul, but he appeared to Saul on the road to Damascus. Now part of the criteria of being an apostle was being an eyewitness to the resurrection 
And Saul wasn't at the tomb. So Jesus made a special appearance <laughs> to Paul on the road to Damascus so that he could incorporate him to be an apostle for him. Oh God, a special appearance just for Paul wow. to be our apostle. Yeah. Paul to lead the Gentiles and we are the Gentiles because we're not Jews. Yes, he showed up. He showed up. He showed up in my life too. I wasn't planning to be saved. I just went to some little old church and was sitting there and, and all of a sudden the Spirit of God got a hold of me. Yes, I was sitting on the back pew and the Spirit of God got a hold of me. I wasn't planning on doing what I did that day. I wasn't planning on everything happening the way that it did. But when God gets a hold of your life, mm -hmm. I guarantee you it's going to cause a change to take place in your life. And God did that for me. I was going to do something. I was going to go out and party and have a big time. But God got a hold of me and I didn't get to do everything that I had planned to do. I never made it to the club because God showed up in my life. And God has loved me all through my life. Have you ever had a moment with Jesus? You know, or do you just go to church? Or is there some nice looking girl there that you're interested in in the church and you're wanting to impress her and tell her that you and Jesus are all cool and everything. If you have a moment with Jesus, it will radically change your perspective, your attitude, and, and you look at how Jesus wrecked everything in Saul's life and then rebuilt it. And suddenly in one moment, Everything that he was living in, the situation was gone. He was changed in the twinkling of an eye. You can't be a member of the Sanhedrin and preach Jesus. You can't be a Pharisee and preach Jesus. You can't be zealous concerning the law and teach grace. It changed his head. It changed his identity. It changed his priesthood. It changed everything about him. God wiped the slate clean, completely clean. This is why Paul said, I profess to know nothing but Christ and him crucified. Amen. He is not just going to fall into the trap thinking that he is smarter than what God is. Not gonna happen. Mm -hmm. He spoke in five different languages, but he said, I'm a fool for Christ. And he had a moment with God alone, which nobody there, but the men who were with him that led him knew because he was on his way to Damascus. And this is not how you plan to go to Damascus. He was going there in strength. He was going there to actually take all the people and carry them back to the priest for punishment. Paul was on a mission, and all of a sudden his total and complete mission was changed. He had planned to be strong and attack people. Scratching women out of the house, snatching them and taking them before the priest. You think sometimes we have it rough. 
but God's got a plan for you. Amen. God told him to, to go to a man that he didn't even know. His, his name was Ananias. And Ananias didn't want to go to see Paul either. <laughs> but there, he told him to go down on the street called Straight. Now that's kind of interesting within itself. Yeah, straight Street. We all need to get straight. But he didn't even know Ananias' address. But God was going to lead Ananias to him. God tells Ananias to pray for Saul. He said, are, are you serious? <laughs> Saul of Tarsus? You want me to pray for him? Don't you know what he does? Don't you know what he's done? All of the things that he's done. God told us to forgive and pray. Forgive and pray. But we won't pray for some people because they're not in our clique, our club. I'm not praying for no Democrat. <laughs> I'm not praying for no Republican. Oh. I'm not praying for black folks. Or I'm not praying for white folks. But I went through something. You know what I went through? I didn't care what you go through when you go through it and you respond to it as a child responds. God will humble you down before. God does promises for you so that you will know that he's on your side and that he's for you. When you stand praying, the Bible says forgive if you have anything against anyone. When you stand praying, forgive. How long can you stand? There's some people I just can't forgive. There's some people that's done things for me that is just so bad I, I can't forgive them for it. They don't care. Mm -hmm. don't and, and if you don't forgive, God can't forgive you. And so therefore it becomes sickness and it's Amen. sin and it builds up on the inside of you and it destroys you. Yep. It's like people that pull in front of you when you're driving down the highway. And you're just fussing at them and carrying on, and they can't hear a word you're saying. They read sign language. But Ananias went down and he prayed for Saul. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Cry may be in the night. But joy Amen. comes in the morning. Mm -hmm. We may have to endure it for the night. Mm -hmm. Sometimes things happen and we may have to go through something. But the Bible says we'll go through it. He didn't ask us how we felt about it. But if God says it's morning, then it's morning. Well, Lord, I don't feel like it's morning. I, I look outside and it's still dark outside and it feels like night. But if God said it, that settles it. Mm -hmm. It's morning. You can look at it any way you want to. You can think about it any way you want to. But God's word is true. Mm -hmm. So he wants you to rejoice like it's morning. All the time. He wants you to enjoy your life. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't have a promise of tomorrow. Mm -mm. But as long as we're here, we might as well enjoy while we're here. Mm -hmm. We let problems and, and things upset us when we should have a better response to those things because God wants us to live our lives. Sometimes it's a training moment of how we respond to a bad situation. 
Get the malice out of your heart. How do you pray for a man who was coming to kill you? How do you pray for a man who was taking all of your friends and everyone and carrying them up to be killed? But that's why God accepted you is to help remove the malice from your heart. How can we hold that in us when God has sacrificed so much for us? Because whatever you did, it isn't worth you losing your authority with God. Whenever they said, it ain't worth you losing the power that you have with God. No matter how it hurts you, we still need to forgive. Amen. You still got to go and do those things that you do. If God said do it, then you got to do it. See, we don't use the word anymore about obedience that much. Obedience is better than sacrifice. It's what the Bible says. Appreciate whatever you do in your life, however you respond in your life. But if you will obey the word of God, how can you obey the word of God when you don't know the word of God? You can't give your way into a license to do wrong. The Bible says love your enemies. God knows there's a lot of them that we're dealing with today. Uh -huh. So Ananias obeyed God, and he goes down there and lays hands on the man who was going to lay hands on him. <laughs> can you do it? No, seriously, can, can you do it? Can you pray for somebody that you don't like? Can you pray for somebody that you don't agree with? Can you pray for somebody who's done you wrong? Who continues to do you wrong? Can you do it? Can you lay hands on a person who comes to hurt you? And the knife laid hands on Saul, who was going to lay hands on him. The power of his obedience caused the scales to fall off of Paul's eyes. I don't know who I'm preaching to. But I'm talking to somebody mm -hmm. that if you would just do what God says do, yeah. it'll change your life completely. Yeah. If you will lay down your pride and humble yourself, the power you will receive is astronomical. The scales fell off his eyes, and suddenly Paul can see. And he goes from having a moment with God to having a moment as a misfit. We need to testify. We need to stand firm in our word of God. Training. How, how can you, he go back to the Sanhedrin and tell them what has taken place in his life. How can he do that? He can no longer go back and tell them because they'll not receive him anymore into the place that he was. And his philosophy now has changed. Now he's got credibility. They have empowered him to attack what he has now become. They have empowered him to attack what he has now become. He can't go back. You can't go back. If, if you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, don't give it up. Don't step away from it and and backslide and start doing the same stupid
stupid things that you did before. God wants to help you. The problem, however, is not just that he can't go back because I can leave one group and go to another group. I can be rejected by this group if I'm accepted by another group. Some people will not believe you no matter what you do. So he has been accepted by the misfits. Here we are. He's been accepted by the misfits. We are all misfits. Mm -hmm. If you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're a misfit. You can change your hat. You can change your clothes. You can change your style, change your walk, but you're still going to be the same person that you are. You have to be accepted by the misfits. Paul. Look at somebody and say, I'm different. I, I'm different. I'm different. You ain't never seen nobody like me before. <laughs> You're never going to see anybody like me again. I'm an individual. I'm different. After years and years of low esteem and crying about it, I am finally started to accept that I am different. I'm cool with it. I'm okay with it. I can live with it. I understand it. I've been trained in it. And I learned how to be a misfit. It didn't matter mm. that you didn't like me. That you didn't believe in me. That you didn't stand with me because I had encountered Jesus. You know, I had people when I was born again would come around the same old group wanting to do the same old thing at, at the same old places. And I wasn't able to to do that with them anymore. And so they cast me out of the little groups that they had. Mm. So I went to church and got with a bunch of misfits. There we go. God loves you. Because Paul was a misfit, he gives us most of the New Testament. He gives us the New Testament apostles because he does not fit in with either group. He's an outcast. I've been an outcast, but God didn't leave me that way. Mm -hmm. right again. Are you a misfit? Mm -hmm. I think we all are misfits. Stop fighting it. Stop changing yourself. Stop redoing your philosophies. Stop trying to be what everybody else wants you to be and be what you were meant to be. Your Savior was a misfit. The stone that the builders rejected has been made the chief cornerstone. Amen. Stop crying about it. Stop worrying about it, being frustrated about it. You don't want to be in with those people anyway. Mm. You want to be in with God's people. Mm. It takes one to know one. Look at your neighbor and introduce him again to you by saying, hello, I'm different. My name is different. My walk is different. My talk is different. My ways of thinking are different. The way I believe is different. Everything about me is different. I hear some people say that it doesn't cost anything to be saved. But I want you to know it costs everything to be saved. Yes, I understand it if you don't like me. Everybody can't walk with a misfit. You have
have to be a misfit yourself to understand another misfit when you see it. You don't fit in with the family or the community or anything, neighborhood, anything around you because you're a child of God. Amen. You're just a misfit for Jesus. Mm -hmm. Often, it takes half of your life of being a misfit because we are all advertised, marketed, modeled, promoted to fit in. We all think we want to fit in and be whatever it takes to fit in the group. That's what we want to do. But no, we're misfits. It hurts sometimes. It's lonely being a misfit unless you've got a good group that's with you to help you on your way. When you're a misfit, you're misunderstood. They accuse you of being arrogant, being high-minded, thinking too much of yourself, walk around with your head up in the air. Yes, I'm looking to the eastern skies and waiting on my Lord to return. Come on, misfits, back me up on this. That's right. We're all misfits. We all need to fight. We, we all need to be in the fight. The Bible says immediately Paul started preaching. Immediately. immediately. You know, when I was uh, saved, uh, the, the cleansing within me was just so good, and, and I've done so many stupid things since then, and, and God had cleanse me again, but there's nothing like having the anointing and the power of Almighty God in your life to change everything that there is about you because God loves you. The Lord said, in between the fight, preach the gospel, lay hands on the sick, open the blinded eyes, rebuke the devil, and keep on going. There's time, there's situations that we as God's people need to stand up and be counted. I wish I had some people that would just praise God in the fight. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And to God be the glory. Be the glory. Who all wants to be included in the closing prayer. I see hands all over the church. Father, we just thank you and praise you for another wonderful and glorious day. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us, the sacrifices that you made for us that we could be part of the family, God. It's just so great to be part of the family of God, and we give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Jimmy, would you dismiss us and ask God's blessing to go with us?